Hey. Happy Monday. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday on uh, the last Monday before Halloween. Ooh. Uh, I will not be around for our Halloween episode. Uh, Carly will have a special guest host with her. Uh, but uh, this is the last time you're going to see me in October. Uh, so thank you for spending this time with us. Uh, we got a few people coming into the chat while we're waiting for everyone to log in. Let's uh, say hi to some of our early arrivals. Vince Lamb wants to wish everyone a happy United Nations Ooh. Day, National Food Day. Uh, we, well, we always talk about food and international parks here. So you're right. That's perfect. It's also yep. National Baloney oh, Day. No, thank you. No, no baloney here. <laughs> no baloney here. Uh, Michael Bingham saying hello to everybody. Yes, let us have some fun this Monday. Hello to Blossom and Terry in Derek's corner and our friend John Self. I know I know why. I'm not sure what that means, John. Maybe it's about balloons. Be mysterious. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, we'll just wait another second or two, give folks a chance to log on, and then we will be launching into the show. Perfect. In just a few seconds. Uh, and uh, we got some fun stuff to talk about this week. We have a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, over a dozen people here. So we are going to kick this thing off. Last chance. Oh, a couple more comments. Brian says, oh, Brian went out for the music we festival in yeah. Las Vegas when we were young. Um, yeah, that, that I you know, it's, it is better uh, that they cancel that than someone gets hurt because uh i saw the winds 50 60 miles an hour winds and that was an outdoor concert uh yeah that could have ended badly uh, right. but i um, guess i guess the remainder of it uh, i think yesterday continued yes uh, so, i saw a lot of people were there yesterday um marcel is checking in from west palm beach Ooh. and you know, bring back the show with Banksley. I miss Banks the show is a little too. busy. Banks, Banks has moved on to bigger and better things. If you want to see Banks, uh, go and head on over to Legoland. Legoland, yes. Yep. Um, so, all right, let's kick this show off in three, two, one. Please lower your head and watch your step while boarding. Welcome to the Attractions Podcast. You are all clear for dispatch. Have fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 162 of the Attractions Podcast, sponsored by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. I am Seth. And I'm Carly. And we are here to talk to you about the latest and greatest in theme park news and more, as well as what's going on in our own lives. Carly, you've had an adventure this week, and I want to hear all about it. Yes. So my haunt season has continued, and it was very exciting because I got to visit a brand new event this year at Hershey Park. <sighs> so, so jealous. One of both of us, one of our favorite parks. I know. Right. This is just such a special park. I know we're from the Northeast, so it's a very big thing in the region, but it is truly an amazing place. So clean, and for the first time ever they have a haunt event. So they've always done Halloween, but it's been family friendly. This year, they're joining the ranks with Dark Nights. And Ooh. it was amazing. So basically, the family friendly event is still going on. And then they have houses and scare zones that you can access the houses with an additional wristband. Yes. Uh, um, so how, the, for their first time doing haunted houses, how do you think they did? So it was kind of crazy. I brought my sister who goes to a lot of the haunt events with me. I screamed more one night there than I had the entire season of going to like a dozen events. Wow. It was very well done. The houses were incredible. The operations also, which I was probably most concerned about that because, you know, it's brand new. First, it, yeah. yeah, it was great. The, the first night uh, we went 
two nights in a row, actually, Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday night, we breezed into every house, did them multiple times. The scare actors gave it their all. The design was amazing. It's very creepy because that park is already dark and very heavily wooded. Mm -hmm. with trees. Oh, yeah. So it was creepy. Uh, there was one that was my favorite and it was seen to a coal mine, the haunted coal mine. Ooh, yeah. And we did it like over and over and over again. And one of my favorite parts is it has that water special effects that we see in a lot of houses mm -hmm. but with the lights and projections and such. Yeah. And this was the best version of that I've ever seen. Ooh. There was they somehow perfected the ripples in top and it really looked like we were in water and it really did a good job of hiding the scare actors who were underneath the water. Uh, so it is only one more weekend. If you can get there, get there. It's, it was so well done. I absolutely loved it. And uh, yeah, just go. Well, if you can. <laughs> hopefully uh, you know, I've, I've I've heard reviews like yours, a lot of praise for it. Hopefully uh, it's successful enough that they can expand it next year and uh, I'll be able to make it up there to check yes. it out. I, I think it should be. It was super impressive. One of my favorite haunt nights of the entire season. So, That's and I will say one, one more thing, you know, it's not that polished where the scare actors are working to music cues and have to mm -hmm. come out of the line, you know, some, sometimes that feels like they're like animatronics, which at some of these big ones, yep. Yep. It's like that. Uh, this did not feel like that. The actors took liberty. They pulsed it amazingly. So they let you uh, in, in groups of six at most. Sometimes wow. they let just me and my sister in and held back the people, but you still didn't feel like you were waiting really a lot. And it, I think maybe that's why it was terrifying because we weren't in a yeah. line. You know? Exactly. That's really intimate. That's great. Uh, yeah. So kudos to them. I'm excited. Good. I think next year will be even better. Uh, Get there if you can. Well, well, maybe we shouldn't tell too many people back because we don't want to get so oh, crowded yeah. <laughs> that they have to start pulse, stop right. pulsing, right? <laughs> don't stop um, pulsing, Hershey Park. <laughs> well, that that is fantastic. Um, I uh, I did not have quite as an exciting a week, but I did get to do one fun Halloween thing. I was over at Universal and I finally got to check out the Dead Coconut Club. Yes. And they oh they did such a great job in there with the decor. Um, you know, the drinks were good. Uh, the tiki glasses, I think next year, if they want to sell souvenir tiki glasses, they got to upgrade uh, right. something more than these little cheap plastic ones. But of course, I had to bring one home. Uh, and the best part was I happened to be there just for the debut of the <sighs> classic monsters meet and greet. Uh, Frankenstein's that monster was... and his bride came out and then Dracula came out. Uh, they looked like they were probably the old costumes from the uh, Beetlejuice graveyard review right um uh, I like but the it was <laughs> yeah yeah it was the mullet frank uh but it was so great uh seeing them again they were really interactive they really oh. were were in character and they did meet and greets inside plus they went out on the balcony and were waving pe at people out in city walk great addition uh big thumbs up uh universal please uh this needs to become a spooky christmas bar mm -hmm. or a like uh, Santa Tiki bar, maybe, and mm -hmm. then it could be like a voodoo ba bar for uh, Mardi Gras. Let's keep this thing going year round, please. Right, I agree, and I really loved it because it almost feels like two spaces in one. In the back, it's more like a club, I would say, mm -hmm. traditional, more city walk, still highly themed. But I love the front area, obviously, because yeah. it has that just like spooky vibe of a lounge. Yeah. It's it's so. And I I really love the the upstairs. Um, it's themed out to the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. they've got kind of like water lighting effects and uh, there's some really comfy chairs up there. Great place to chill out. Um, so, yeah, check out uh, Dead Coconut Club. Check in the app. The the hours vary uh, depending on the Halloween Horror Night schedule. And they've also been doing a lot of special events up there. Uh, I tried to to hit it just uh, again uh, a couple of days ago and uh, it was all blocked off for a special event. So uh, check the app for the opening times before you drive over, but highly recommend it. And um, I'm looking forward uh, right after we finish this today, I'm going to drive down to Miami and check out the Stranger Things oh. pop-up store that is uh, in the Aventura Mall for the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'll have something to share about that next week or actually after <laughs> after when i get Where back going? <laughs> i am uh i am going on an msc cruise this will be my third msc cruise in a year and uh you know they they brought me on first uh as a guest uh, as media 
uh, to review it. And uh, I have liked it so much that I've I've paid out of my own pocket to go back now a second time. So um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I need a, a few days to disconnect from the internet and uh, just be lost at sea. That's looking a perfect to way it. to do it. <laughs> um okay well i believe it is now time for us to jump into the news in the queue all right we're kicking off the news in the queue on the high seas where i'll be soon Adventures by Disney is launching an expedition cruise in the Adriatic Sea in 2024 that's going to offer round-trip expeditions from Venice, Italy, uh, visiting such uh, spots as Croatia and Montenegro along the Dalmatian coast. Yeah, this is really cool. I love that Adventures by Disney is really getting into beyond just the river cruises, you know, these expedition cruises. They are the smaller ships, mm -hmm. less rooms more intimate but you still get that you know disney level service and i feel like now that they've been working a lot with nat geo and everything they're really getting into high gear with these more adventure based yeah i i love the disney cruise line ships uh but this is not something with a huge broadway theater and water <laughs> slides this is uh eight days seven nights on a uh, ponant luxury yacht it's called the le bougainville and it's tiny, it's intimate. You'll get to know all the other passengers. You'll have an amazing service. Um, and it's small enough that it can get you into act, to, uh, remote uh, locations, little ports like Dubrovnik and Split. Um, something else that I think is interesting is, uh, you know, usually Disney is all about Disney. Uh, but uh, part of this trip is you'll get to check out filming locations from the HBO series Game of Thrones. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, I also love that with the Adventures by Disney, that you also have a Disney guide that's with you. Mm -hmm. And that is a big difference from just even a normal river cruise or expedition cruise. And they are highly trained, knowledgeable. They will show you the secret gems of these de destinations. So you don't have to, it, it is a high price tag, but you're getting that kind of luxury concierge service. So you maybe don't yeah. have to feel like, hey, I'm going to, Paris and I need to look up all these places to go. You're going to be going to some pretty, you know, interesting and maybe off, you know, hidden gem spots, but mm -hmm. they're going to be able to show you the way. So you don't have to be nervous about, you know, what you're doing once you arrive there. Yeah. Uh, I would say the advantage of one of these adventures by Disney trips is a lot of time, if you're on a big cruise ship and you get to a port and, you know, maybe you sign up for a, uh, excursion and you know it might be some local who's uh who's running the excursion and it might be great it might not be great with adventures by disney you know every single excursion you take is going to have a professional you know disney quality guide um so uh you know you're going to have as good experience on land as as you do when you're on the boat um, um amazing views uh you know um it's uh, it, Dubrovnik's old city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, there's wine, there's oysters, there's, you know, it, it's, it's luxury. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be, it sounds pretty amazing. Um, uh, in addition to uh, this one, they are also going to be continuing their cruises uh, in Antarctica and the Patagonia. Um, there's uh, an Arctic expedition cruise. Uh, and there's also a trip to the Galapagos Islands. Um, so some really just incredible ecological wonders. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, if you have to ask how much one of these costs, you probably can't afford it. Right. But you can find out by visiting adventuresdisney.com. I would love to go on one of these someday. Right. Someday. Manifest. <laughs> Manifest, yes. Uh, next up, I'm excited for this one. Fantasmic is returning to Disney's Hollywood Studios and Walt Disney World on November 3rd. And I have my Park Pass reservation, so I will be there on opening night. Yes, I will be there as well, too. This is a long time. Oh, yay. I mean, yes, yes, I will be in town next week. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, obviously, I have been singing the song in my head or at least humming it for like the last week. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for the brand new sequences. Yes. So I'm excited that it didn't just come back. 
it is going to be coming back with a little something new. So this is going to feature an Aladdin chase scene, a new portion with Queen Elsa, and they're going to be using the song Show Yourself, which mm-hmm. is the best song from Frozen 2. And there's going to be moments with Pocahontas, Moana, and Mulan. So this is huge for Disney Park fans. Yeah. So from what I understand, the overall structure of the show is still the same. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything from uh, a sorcerer Mickey and fighting the dragon and the Steamboat Willie boat at the end, all of those iconic moments are still part of it. The biggest change from, from what I hear is that the Pocahontas segment, which was a really long kind of slow stunt sequence right. that sort of brought everything to a halt has been broken up. And now we have still a moment with Pocahontas. I think there's going to be a fight choreography segment with Mulan. Uh, and I hear that they brought back uh, the original actress who did a body reference for the, the original Mulan to help choreograph that. Um, and like you mentioned, uh, Elsa, Moana, Aladdin. So it's it's going to take what was kind of a long, sort of boring sequence and hopefully jazz it up. Uh, but we're going to have brand new lasers, upgraded lighting, better projectors, better sound. So, you know, everything that was built in the late 90s should mm-hmm. now be, you know, up to current day standards. Right. And so maybe it could hold its own against Disneyland's version, which (laughs) arguably many people love it uh, a little bit more. But no, this is exciting because Hollywood Studios has been without a nighttime show for too long. Mm -hmm. Oh, (laughs) absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Yes. They they need this to, uh, you know, push attendance at uh, Hollywood Studios towards the second half of the day because, you know, everyone rope drops for Slinky and and Rise of the Resistance. And then by late afternoon, the place is emptying out. So this this should definitely help with that. And, uh, you know, we can have a whole episode debating over Fantasmic Disneyland versus Disney World. Uh, I'm going to reserve my judgment until I see how the new projections look and everything. (laughs) I, I do love the fact that you have a bench to sit on at Disney World. You don't have to you know stand or sit on sit on the car, cold ground. Right. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure that uh, our Maleficent is going to stand up to the one that they have in California because that one's just amazing. Right. I'm. I am not sure, but I'm going to Disneyland this weekend, and I'm going to see Fantasmic there as a refresher. Awesome. So there will just be like days be apart in your mind. Disney World, and then try to make a somewhat informed decision. But regardless, this is great news for guests visiting Disney World. Much long awaited, very exciting. So uh, like we said, this starts up on November 3rd and it's gonna run uh, at least a couple shows every night. Um, If you wanna see it, uh, you can either show up at least an hour and a half uh, before the show if you wanna get a seat. Um, Or starting on October 26th, uh, which is just a couple days from now, they are going to let you book dining packages. Those dining packages, they uh, won't be available until November 30th, though. So that gives us almost a full month with the ability to use the whole stadium for standby people uh, instead of having to reserve uh, the best seats for dining packages. So if you don't want to buy a dining package, great time the next few weeks to check out the show. Uh, Disneyworld.com is the place to go for more information. Coming up next, over at Universal Orlando, they are doing something really cool and offering a hands-on learning experience for the next generation of theme park designers who are attending University of Central Florida's Themed Experience Program. Uh, What a cool opportunity if you want to get into, you know, theme entertainment world and the new program UCF Universal Creative Lab will actually give students, you know, like you think of an internship, this is like an internship to the next level because you're Mm going to be getting hands on face to face time with the creative leads is what they're sharing with us. Yeah, they, they kicked off this program with UCF back in 2019, but has been growing. Uh, and it's basically a combination of classroom learning and on-site hands-on learning uh, with the show producers, the designers, the directors um, who uh, make up Universal Creative. Uh, so it's the folks who are actually building the parks are the ones who are uh, teaching uh, these students. Um, 
you can the the first class is uh, going to be offered to graduate students uh, enrolled in UCF's themed experience program. So this is uh, this is not for undergrads. This is uh, for graduate students. Um, and there's going to be a second class happening in summer of 2023, and that is going to be available to grads and upper class undergrads from any college, not just UCF. So uh, if you're going somewhere else in the country, but you're interested in this as a career, definitely check this out for summer of 2023. Absolutely. Um, yeah, they've uh, UCF actually has a pretty extensive program. They've got a, a MFA in theater themed uh, experience track. They've got a master of science in themed experiences. Uh, right now there's over 60 students enrolled. Wow. Um, and we've got some great links uh, on our website, on our article about this. There's a podcast you can listen to, um, and uh, there is uh, a link to learn how to apply at cah.ucf.edu. If, uh, you know, I, I kind of came in from the theater angle. I went mm -hmm. to undergrad for theater and then just uh, kind of threw everything owned in a truck and moved down to mm -hmm. Orlando to, to find a job. But, uh, you know, if something like this was around when I was in school, you know, I definitely would have considered sticking around for a master's degree. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Coming up next is something that I'm not sure how I feel about yet. Pipeline, the world's first surf coaster, is coming to SeaWorld Orlando in 2023. And it is going to take guests on a 60 mile an hour surfing style adventure while standing up. Yes. Big waves are coming to the coaster capital of Orlando. Yeah. Uh, I am unsure how I feel about this as well. You will be, as you guessed, standing as you mm -hmm. are loaded into the ride vehicle. The ride vehicle itself will be surfboard shaped. And the track is meant to emulate wave jumping motions. Yes. So, I mean, we're going to do it. We have to do it. But this is just very interesting. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you're going to feel the rush of uh, surfing on the ocean by going up uh, to 110 feet in the air, going upside down while standing, mm. uh, hitting 60, 60 miles an hour um, along the 2,950 feet of track. Uh, and uh, the whole experience will last uh, just under two minutes. Uh, this is an this is a B and M stand up, and I have experienced B and M stand ups before. Uh, way back in the day, they had one at Six Flags Great yes. Adventure. It was called Shockwave, and then I think it was renamed Green Lantern and moved around the country. I I will say, as a um, person of the male gender, that it was not the most comfortable riding experience I've ever had. Uh, imagine trying to stand on a bicycle seat uh, while being <laughs> flung around um, and everything that that would involve. The big difference with this coaster, I guess the thing that makes it a first of its kind, is that the whole seat mechanism seems to bounce up and down. It's like it, the whole thing's on a shock absorber. So instead of your crotch being slammed into the seat repeatedly, <laughs> Um, you're going to be, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's almost like a dance move. If you right. watch the video, everyone's kind of like hopping up and down. Yeah. So that should uh, help with kind of the I, ebb I, and flow of it all. Maybe it'll yes. be more comfortable. I, I, it cannot be less comfortable. That is yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so this will be interesting, but I mean, it's exciting because they just, SeaWorld just keeps doing it again and again. <laughs> you know, it's like, everyone in our, uh, if anyone is listening uh, right now uh, and wants to throw in the comments that they have ridden a stand-up coaster and uh, enjoyed the sensation, sure. <laughs> uh, please, please comment right now. No, anyone? No. Okay. All right. Um, well, this is going to be uh, <laughs> comfortable or not. Um, and you know, it's, it's B and M and they've, they've, they're, they'll, I'm sure they've, they've got a trick up their sleeve to uh, make this not bruise people in sensitive places. But yeah. the pipeline will be the seventh coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. So yes, uh, this is definitely going to add to their reputation as uh, the coaster capital of this city. Um, and uh, yeah, it is. looks like it's going next to 
the Dolphin Stadium, um, sort of on yes. the opposite mm -hmm. side from where Icebreaker is. So there's basically, you know, between this and Mako and Icebreaker, they're basically filling all the waterfront around their big central lagoon with uh, roller coasters. Yep. And there could be some cool opportunities for some food and beverage to go along with this. Mm. Uh, the one thing I will say is if you're going to do a surfing coaster, I think it would have been cooler to put everyone facing sideways. Because like when I think of surfing, oh. I don't feel of like standing straight on the mm -hmm. board. I think of like standing sideways right. on the board. Um, but uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll have to check this one out together and yes. uh, compare our injuries afterwards. <laughs> One time, at least. Uh, next up, we are going to take you inside Royal Caribbean's Innovation Lab um, and the largest water park at sea. Uh, just a couple of the new features coming to the ginormous Icon of the Seas cruise ship uh, that's going to be headquartered in Miami. Yes. Yeah, so last week, I got to go to their headquarters at Port Miami, and this was so cool because rarely do they invite, you know, average common people into their innovation lab. You so are that, neither you know, average nor common. <laughs> well, you know, non-Royal Caribbean creatives. Right. Uh, outsiders. Outsiders. And so imagine this is like their version of Imagineering, essentially. So, you know, it's all about where they create things, where they dream up of things. Many things will never even come to fruition, but they have that freedom to kind of experiment we couldn't bring cameras in most of it, but one of the coolest things they showed us was they're working on a mobile ice cream machine. Pretty and good. it's like a jet pack that crew members what? could wear. And the jet pack is, has the ice cream in the back. And then it's like a hose with ice cream that you could squirt <laughs> out and go around the pool and just squirt out ice cream into people's That's cups. hilarious. Uh, they said there only one ice cream cone was able to be made. They're having issues with it. So I don't know if that, ah. <laughs> if you'll ever see that on the high seas, but it was cool. And then obviously this was all about announcing some of the big things that are coming to Icon of the Seas. It is overwhelming. They had, they're still doing the neighborhood thing, which is what Royal Caribbean is known for, but they're adding new ones. So in addition to Central Park, this will be the biggest water park at sea. Yeah. And it, it looks is, wild. It's amazing. Uh, it is called Thrill Island. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, I guess the, the water, that's Thrill Island is the name of the neighborhood. Yep. And yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Category 6 uh, is the name of the water park itself. Seems a little risky to be naming uh, Caribbean Cruise Liner yeah. after a hurricane, but uh, this is going to have not one, not two, but six record-breaking slides. Um, pressure drop is one of these capsule straight down drop things with a 66 degree drop. Uh, it's the first open free fall slide at sea in the industry. Um, a 40 foot 46 foot tall frightening bolt, which is the tallest drop at sea, um, a storm surge, hurricane hunter, family raft rides, um, uh, a uh, duo uh, ra racing mat slide. Um, and the one that blew my mind is the crown oh, edge, yes. <laughs> which is not a water slide, but it's one of these uh, adventure ropes courses where you're harnessed in uh, with like a, a rock climbing setup. And you walk on a ledge and it drops out underneath you and you just sort of zip line around <laughs> over the water. Oh, my God. 154 feet above the, the ocean. Right. This is going to be pretty next level. I mean, a game changer in the cruise industry for sure. Yep. I love that they also have a water area that is going to be specifically built for families with kids six and under. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what we got to walk around in some of the mock-ups of oh, cool. so very family friendly but also you know there's a lot of stuff i feel like they're catering really to the multi-gen traveler they're mm -hmm. really trying to hit every single mark and all these areas are pretty much self-contained so if you want to go on this cruise and not be by any water park you don't have to be yeah. which i think is the nice thing you know you could just kind of everything's tucked away mm-hmm 
Um, yeah, and it, it does really seem that they are aiming directly at Disney's big new ships by mm -hmm. saying, you know, you think you you got family stuff? We got stuff for family. You know, you, you've got the a dry kids playground area, uh, wet areas, the slides for, you know, teens and, and older kids. Um, uh, you know, all of they've even got a, an adorable carousel in yes. uh, in the kind of an open air neighborhood. Uh, you know, they've got they've got that Central Park, which they're bringing back, and mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be even more lush than the original one. But this is sort of like a companion to Central Park. That's an open air area that's that's very family and kid friendly. Right. What I liked about this one, it's it's called Surfside. So it's mm -hmm. basically imagine like a little water area for kids, you know, mm -hmm. like six and under. But they also have a bar in it seating mm. for family a uh, pool that goes over the edge i think it's literally called water's edge food and dining so essentially you can bring your kid there and not be bored to tears because there will be plenty for you to do and you could spend yep. the whole day there you're not going to have to leave to have a good meal and very purpose built is that mm -hmm. kind of what they were driving home is that everything they're doing is the stuff that they have learned 50 years in the making yeah, you, know, you just and gotta I, go through it and figure. It I gotta out. love uh, this mock-up that you uh, took a picture yes. of uh, <laughs> of the carousel. It's so cute uh, with this adorable narwhal with, uh, I guess, rainbow <laughs> rainbow horn. So cute. Um, so uh, there, there's a lot more coming there's on this ship. Mm -hmm. uh, there's I, I watched like a two-hour video detailing all of it, and I felt like there was probably still more they hadn't told us. Um, they brought right. the 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 aqua theater indoors and it's now got robot arms and a, a waterfall mm -hmm. um it's just uh this thing is going to be massive uh when it launches it's debuting in 2024 uh, i hear they're actually going to deliver the ship in late 2023 but they're not going to start public sailings because they they need some time since it's a brand new class to work out all the bugs mm -hmm. um uh they are going to open up bookings for this though starting uh tomorrow october 25th um and if you are a crown and anchor loyalty member and you're listening to us record this live uh you can start booking today and if you want to do that uh our recommendation is that you call mei travel to do so right and i heard that agents are already getting been bombarded oh yeah families are saw this preview last week and they are you know have to be on it yeah uh, it's going to be out of Miami. It's going to be doing seven nights, uh, Eastern and Western Caribbean uh, alternating. Uh, and I would love to check this out after it launches. I am looks like I might be spending a couple days on the Wonder of the Seas, uh, which I think was the uh, biggest ship until this one comes along. Um, right. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking that out. Uh, I have not done a Royal Caribbean in a long time. And when I did, it was one of their older ships. So I'm really excited to see uh, what their new stuff is like. Absolutely. All right. Coming up next, we're heading to King's Island, where they have announced a new land called Adventure Port coming in 2023 with two new rides and reimagined classic favorite, the Adventure Express Mine Train Coaster. Yeah, this is really neat. Uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, Kings Island is an amusement park. So the, now mm -hmm. they're really leaning into offering some experiences, which you would traditionally find at more of a theme park. But what I'm seeing in the, you know, the renderings that they've shown us, it looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, they are uh, kind of taking a whole area that was sort of a hodgepodge of different unrelated things uh, and giving it a grander narrative. Uh, the story involves um, a forbidden temple uh, that explorers uh, visit the adventure port to uh, search for, but then they often disappear for unknown reasons. Um, so uh, as you are exploring the area, you are going to find a couple new rides. Uh, one is called Saul Spin, uh, and it's supposed to look like a big ancient sun disk. Uh, mm -hmm. It sends you up 60 feet in the air uh, at 25 miles an hour. It's basically a spinning flat ride. Uh, and then the other one is Cargo Loco, and that is a teacup attraction. Uh, it's just like the teacups that you're familiar with, except right. they look like wooden shipping barrels. Yeah, no, it looks really cool from the images. I mean, just alone, those ride vehicles are pretty neat. So, mm -hmm. And then 
Adventure Express. Uh, it has been around since 1991. Um, it's a, a family coaster. Its biggest drop is only 63 feet. Um, but it is going to uh, reconfigure its queue. It's going to get new theming elements, um, some surprises along the way. Um, so that should uh, kind of reinvigorate that classic attraction. Yeah. And then uh, obviously, I know a lot of people are going to be excited about, along with Adventure Port means new food and dining options. So they're going to take the beer garden, which you may be familiar with if you've been there, and that's going to become the Mercado. Mm -hmm. So yep. that looks really nice. Yeah. And uh, uh, Hank's Mexican Grill uh, is going to be a new quick service restaurant called Enrique's. Um, so we don't, we know that this is going to be part of the 2023 operating system, uh, operating season, sorry. Uh, but we don't know exactly what date, uh, that's going to be. So, um, keep checking, uh, the website for updates on their operating calendar. Right. Yeah. I, my last visit was about five years ago, so I'm thinking it is time for a new one. <laughs> it's a great for part. Sure. Yeah. Um, next up, Carowinds and King's Dominion are both expanding to year round operations. Uh, they're no longer going to hibernate for the winter. Uh, these, uh, parks in, uh, Carolyn, Carowinds is, uh, between like right on the border between North and South Carolina. King's Dominion is in Virginia. Gets a little chilly in the winter, but they are still going to operate on select weekends um, through January and February now. Yes, I got really excited about this one because I just went to Carowinds for my first time and I absolutely loved it for a regional park. Beautiful. So this is exciting. Uh, we don't know exactly. I mean, we know it's going to be merchandise, dining, games and such will be open. But, you know, with the attraction element, that will be more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, you've got weather conditions, and they've also got to do scheduled maintenance. Maintenance, uh, you know, these these seasonal parks uh, mm -hmm. depend on having downtime to to do, do their refurbishments. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're not going to necessarily have all of the rides open, and uh, depending on how cold it is, you might not want to ride a roller coaster. Right, but you can go really... on Blue Blasters. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, but you're definitely, like you said, going to have uh, dining, merchandise. There's going to be games. Um, and, and there, there will be some things to ride. Um, uh, this is, uh, going to be coming up on Carowinds 50th anniversary in 2023. Yeah, this will be really neat. They're doing a lemon tide special event. They're going to bring, uh, a specialty entertainment, food and beverage opportunities, and then also some more celebration that they haven't announced just yet. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, uh, they are also going to be adding a new area called aeronautica landing. Um, that's going to include five new themed attractions, uh, plus a rethemed ride. So we're going to be looking for more details on that as it gets closer. Yes. And then also King's dominion that will kick off in 2023 as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of keep up to date to see what's going to be actually happening, but this is great news for locals that want to do something on the weekend. Come yep. in, you know, walk around. It's so nice, even if you can't go on anything, just as a frequent park guest, to just enjoy the space. Yeah, this would be great for uh, folks who pick up one of the season passes. And I believe uh, right now they're se selling uh, season passes now that'll be good through 2023. So um, com or kingsdominion.com for all your information. Okay, well, this is a different kind of vacation. <laughs> Voyager Space and Hilton are teaming up to elevate the guest experience uh, for the hospitality suites coming to the Star Lab Space Station, uh, which is going to be Voyager's planned free flying commercial space, space station. Yes, this wow. is, I mean, for a lot of us, it's probably just a pipe dream. <laughs> we're, we're never going to actually do this, but it is yeah. fascinating to go along for the ride as we keep getting more information and more announcements. So yeah. So you can, I wonder if you can get your Hilton honors points up there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, so uh, just for a little background back in 2021 um, Voyager uh, through its operating company, NanoRacks got a grant of $160 million in funding uh, for star lab, which is intended to eventually replace the international space station. 
which is um, aging and also politically problematic. Right. Um, and the idea is that this thing is going to be able to host up to four astronauts. Um, and it's also going to have the George Washington Carver Science Park, which is a state of the art lab and the first science park in outer space. Right. And I, I love this. I mean, Hilton is such an iconic brand. So it makes sense that they would partner with them. And, you know, this is the first of its kind collaboration. Obviously, we don't have hotels in space yet. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Um, yet. Uh, but, you know, this is a step towards it. Um, they're going to partner uh, Voyager and Hilton on uh, the architecture and design for the uh, crew headquarters, uh, including the communal areas, the suites, the sleeping arrangement. Um, and they're also uh, looking at longer term projects uh, involving tourism and education in space. Ooh, I mean, so maybe you can go to university in space. <laughs> Um, am I remembering the movie wrong, but isn't there in the movie 2001, like a little uh, reference to there being a, a Hilton hotel in the space uh, station that he docks in uh, after the first act of the movie? I got to rewatch that. I do know uh, there's a great on our website, uh, a great little throwback from uh, the height of the uh, Cold War space race where Hilton uh, put out an ad advertising for a Hilton on the moon. Uh, including uh, fake uh, keys uh, for your room. <laughs> hey, they all knew something before we did, so. <laughs> yeah, and they were also, Hilton was also the first company to participate in research aboard the ISS when Double Tree's uh, famous warm chocolate cookies were baked in space. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, seems exciting. Uh, maybe someone will go on and maybe yeah. maybe we'll get invited. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I feel uh, very lucky when I get uh, invited on a, uh, a two day media cruise. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get invited to be shot up into space. And even if I did, I don't think my wife would allow me to go. Yeah. That would be a fun ask. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are interested in more about this, check out VoyagerSpace.com. Uh, back down on Earth, <laughs> Give Kids the World's Night of a Million Lights is coming back in a new location. Uh, this is the closest thing that we have to uh, the old uh, Osborne lights that mm. we had at Disney MGM Studios. And it is taking over uh, Island H2O Water Park in Kissimmee, Florida this December to benefit the great work done by Give Kids the World Village. Absolutely. I feel like this is just such a perfect location. You make a whole night out of it. It's right by the Margaritaville Resort, if anyone has been over there. Mm -hmm. You also have all those restaurants. And of course, it is benefiting Give Kids the World Village, which is an incredible nonprofit resort where families, where young children are dealing with illnesses, you know, get to go feel like they're on vacation and live life for a little bit. So this is just such a fun night out and something to get you in the holiday spirit. I know so many people love doing something, you know, we love during haunted season to go to haunted houses during the Christmas season. There's ice at Gaylord. There's a lot, but this is special mm -hmm. because you know, you're doing good at the same time. You're having fun with your family. Absolutely. I, I got to take a little visit over to the village uh, just over a week ago for a Disneyana fan event. And I got to take a tour um, and uh, very happy to see that the village held up well through the hurricane, mm -hmm. didn't have any major damage. And uh, I, I was happy to see that they didn't take all the lights. Um, they have still left enough lights there to decorate the, the themed buildings at the heart of the village so those families who are staying there on site will be able to get to still experience that um, but for the last two years uh, the village was closed due to covid they weren't bringing in families to um, have their wish trips at disney um, and so that was a perfect opportunity to allow you know outsiders to come in uh, who normally aren't allowed to just wander around give kids the world village um, and let them, you know, get a little taste of, of what the place is like. Um, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, you know, with families back there, they don't want to invade their privacy. They don't want to stress the kids who are who, who need to be there by having all these tourists come through. Um, but, you know, they still get to hold this event just down the street at the water park and raise the money and uh, you get to enjoy uh, the lights. And they really it really is dazzling. Um, uh, like I said, there are lots of great other light displays uh, going on around town. 
but this is the closest thing to the old Osborne lights that, yes. that uh, I loved. Yeah, and it's, it's a whole night. You know, it's not just looking at lights. They have activities. There's live entertainment. Mm -hmm. There's dueling pianos, jingle and jangle, which yeah. sound amazing. Mm -hmm. a strolling a cappella group. So this is a whole whole night, and it's a very modest price tag associated with it. So yeah, anyway. and the, and the new location gives them some cool opportunities. Like they are doing a dancing light show yes. on the five story water slide, mm -hmm. uh, and they're also going to have some interactive children's activities. Um, and of course, there will be visits with Santa. Uh, though the one thing is, don't bring your bathing suit because no. <laughs> there's not going to be any swimming during the during the uh, nighttime event. Um, uh, yeah, so this all is going to kick off on November 11th. Uh, it's going to run through the 1st of January and tickets are pretty, you know, reasonable. It's, it's $30 for adults or 15 for kids. Um, and it's, uh, an extra three to $5, uh, during peak seasons. And then holiday tickets are, uh, an extra $10. Uh, but if your kid is two and under, you don't need a ticket for them. So sneak in, sneak in all the infants that you like. Yes. <laughs> and then also, if you have a season pass to the water park, there's also discounts. Mm -hmm. And I think they are also looking for volunteers. So, yeah. Uh, if you are interested in this, go to gktw.org slash lights. All right. And for our last story of the news in the queue, Silver Dollar City is announcing an old time Christmas running from November 5th through December 30th of 2022. I'm so excited for this. I love this park, but I have yet to visit for the celebration, which is one of the biggest uh, Christmas holiday celebrations in a theme park in the country. And I'm going to be going to it in a couple of weeks. So awesome. when I read this, I just got so excited. And they are going to be debuting a new show called Coming Home for Christmas. This is going to have a live band, mm -hmm. singers, dancers. And of course, there's other returning shows and entertainment that will be coming to the park. And the highlight is the 6.5 million lights. Mm -hmm. That's a, That's lot, a of lot, lot of lights. <laughs> yes. Not just that, but 1,000 Christmas trees, right. 600 wreaths, and more than three miles of a ribbon and garland. Uh, and you can see it all without tiring your feet out by hopping on the Frisco Singalong steam train. Uh, or you can hop on one of the park's roller coasters and see it from above while going upside down. Ooh, yes. You can do a little time traveler, spin around, see the lights. Uh, but now this is exciting. And of course they do uh, food, which is a great, uh, great offering yeah. there. They always have a nice little twist on Southern food and such. So I am excited to try the specialty food and beverage options that they will be introducing, including their signature miners beef stew, which mm. I've heard about, but never had tried. So, well, and this is also, if you're Thing and doing Christmas shopping, they have all sorts of craftspeople doing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, handmade um, gifts, uh, wood carving, glass blowing, pottery, perfect souvenirs, uh, stuff to take home to the family for sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And these aren't actors, these are actual like multi generational yeah. craftsmen that it's in their family. They do this. I have this beautiful uh, hand glass blown, like extra virgin olive oil holder. It has a little handle on it. It's so pretty. So yeah, yeah definitely get some shopping in while there. Yeah. I mean, you know, Disney parks and Universal here, you know, they do holiday celebrations, but, uh, you know, they, they don't do quite the old fashioned uh, country style Christmas uh, the way you can get in Branson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I would like to see uh, your your take, your face off between Silver Dollar City's Christmas and Dollywood's Christmas. Because I, I feel like Dollywood's about no. the only place right. that could give them a run for their money, especially in the, the live entertainment department. Oh, yes. And they are already, you know, they're under the same umbrella. So I know mm -hmm. it's a lot of, you yep. know, that there's probably a lot of internal competition between. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you want to find out more, um, admission is included uh, with your regular park ticket uh, and starts at $79 plus tax. And you can plan your trip by visiting silverdollarcity.com. All right. That brings us to the end of our news in the queue. Uh, but before we launch into this week's main attraction, let's hear a word from our sponsor. 
The Attractions Podcast is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Whether your next vacation is a magical trip to the theme parks, an exciting adventure to the pyramids of Egypt, or just a relaxing cruise on the turquoise waters of the Bahamas, MEI Travel provides premium service and expert advice to help you get the most of your vacation. They are always free of any hidden fees or costs to you. Visit them at mei-travel.com. It's time for the main attraction! All right, and for our main attraction, a new Disney Live in Concert show debuts at Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, featuring renowned musicians performing multiple styles of music with Mickey. Yeah, this is really neat. This is taking place from November 25th through December 10th, and it is going to be a holiday music celebration. Of course, there's going to be classical music, jazz, and musical theater, and all your favorites, like Mickey Mouse, will be appearing alongside them. And this reminds me a lot of the Disneyland Paris show, where Mickey mm. tap dances, and he's in like a whole <laughs> tuxedo, so that's what I was getting the vibe of. Uh, the entertainment overseas is just so incredible. It's hard not to get a little jealous. It, yeah, it, I'm kind of amazed how they seem to be going all out for shows that are only taking place for one weekend each. This is taking place over three consecutive weekends. You, Friday and Saturday night uh, starts on November 25th. Uh, and 26th with two shows a night um, with famous Hong Kong mu music producer uh, Shui Sang Hai, which I apologize for butchering your pronunciation. Um, and he's leading the Hong Kong City Pops Orchestra. Uh, and Mickey is going to be there in his Sorcerer oh. Mickey costume. So I think uh, we'll probably uh, hear a little Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, yes. And uh, uh, a whole bunch of other characters will also be taking uh, part, including Donald Duck, Goofy, Snow White, Moana, and even Santa Mickey. Yes, and then uh, Jazz Night sounds really cool. So there's going to be a famous Hong Kong guitarist, Eugene Pao, and vocalist Shireen Wong. And they're going to be infusing jazz into classic Disney songs. And Mickey Mouse is going to be all dapper in a full black suit Ooh, ooh, yeah um minnie and goofy will be there and uh woody and buzz lightyear are also going to show up for that performance uh I didn't and it, know he was so highbrow <laughs> right <laughs> um and then it wraps up with musical theater night on december 9th and 10th um and hong kong musical performers chriselle kosunji and jordan chang will join four disney singers uh for a musical theater style show um it mickey is going to present a uh new version of the greatest show from the movie the greatest showman <laughs> uh that i hope someone gets some video of yes uh, oh, I am and for that. <laughs> there's also going to be tributes to Belle and the beast princess jasmine aladdin anna and elsa and they're all going to sing uh, their signature songs Right. And then uh, they're going to be putting together some celebration packages. So basically, you'll be able to bundle your park tickets. You'll get priority seating, which I am sure you're going to want to go for because with such limited dates mm -hmm. for this, I'm sure the demand is going to be amazing. If anything, I know the Asian park guests are going to want to see these specialty costumes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes. So it could, be, it could be tough to get in there, but... Yeah. 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 There, there's a premium package that includes, you know, hotel accommodations, park tickets, even uh, Explorers Club buffet. Um, but there is, you know, base packages where you can just get uh, access to the reserved area uh, and some some food and, uh, and merchandise discounts. Uh, so there's a range of offerings. Um, you're going to want to head to lifestyle dot Asia miles dot com. Uh, and search there for Hong Kong Disneyland for more information about this. Um, right. And and uh, this is just a small part of the Disney Christmas at Hong Kong Disneyland Resort celebration that runs from November 18th through January 2nd. Um, they've got all sorts of live entertainment, a nighttime spectacular from December 2nd through January 2nd. And the one that I think you would love is Duffy and Friends you know Winter what? Wonderland. <laughs> Yes, and they're going to be in their special wintertime oh. costumes. So, oh, so jealous. <laughs> they're going to be so cute. Well, um, keep in mind, uh, there are still very strict uh, travel and COVID restrictions mm -hmm. in China. Um, you would need your app and your vaccine pass. Um, you'd have to purchase your tickets in advance. 
um there's all sorts of screenings um so uh i i always recommend if you are um traveling to a distant part of the world especially one you've never traveled in before find a good travel agent like mei travel uh, to help you make your arrangements and mm -hmm. definitely don't just book a flight and show up on the doorstep in hong no. kong disneyland and expect to be let in yes there's a lot of complexities it's not you know going yeah. to disneyland paris is a breeze compared mm -hmm. to going to some of yeah. these asian parks so yes and you know i've i've been hearing even though that uh the country of Japan is is loosening restrictions on uh, tourism into the country. Visiting uh, Tokyo Disneyland uh, is is still pretty complex uh, mm -hmm. if you're, uh, you know, especially if you're not bilingual with in in Japanese. Um, all right, well, that is going to bring this week's show to an end. Before we go, I want to thank once again our sponsor, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. I want to remind you to please, please, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating on Spotify. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook uh, or uh, YouTube right now, give us a, a like and subscribe. And if you want to find more coverage from all of us at Attractions Magazine on the interwebs, Carly, where can they find you? Yeah, I am on Twitter at Carly Caramana and at Instagram at Adventures by Carly. Uh, you can always find me at the UG series on Twitter, at the unofficial guides on Instagram, and pick up copies of my new guidebooks at the unofficialguides.com. And Attractions Magazine is here for you always 24 7 at attractionsmagazine.com, on Twitter at attractions, at attractions magazine on Instagram, at youtube.com slash attractions magazine, and on TikTok at attractions. Until next week, uh, where I will not be here, but Carly will. Uh, we hope that you folks stay safe, try something new, but most importantly, have fun. And we will see you next time. Yes. See you next Bye. week.